job. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, my name is Jason. I'm an animator at DreamWorks Animation. Um, these are some of the films I've worked on in the past. Uh, most recently, I was head of character animation on Megamind. Currently, I'm working on a film called Peabody and Sherman, which comes out in a few years. So stay tuned. Um, this is a spider. Can I get a round of applause for all of you who hate spiders, please? <laughs> yes! Good. I can't stand them either. Um, they freak, they've got like legs and weird hairs and stuff like that. When I was six years old, I used to have horrible, horrible nightmares about spiders. Terrible nightmares. I would wake up every night crying and screaming. My parents would wake up. They probably hated the fact that I hated spiders. It was awful. None of us got any sleep. One night after about three weeks of doing this, my mom, finally exhausted, came into my room in the middle of the night, handed me a sheet of paper, and she said, draw your spider. So I said, okay. So I drew my spider. Grr, scariest spider I've ever seen. Eyes, fangs. Ugh. And I handed her back the paper, and she said, no. Now draw yourself killing the spider. Awesome. <laughs> so I drew myself killing the spider in the way that I saw most fit, which was like that and went back to sleep. The rest of that night, no more nightmares about spiders. Night after that, no more nightmares about spiders. Basically ended my entire nightmare about spider syndrome, which was fantastic. I got sleep, my parents got sleep, everyone was happy. But the big thing that came out of that was that I got really excited about the power of telling stories through drawings, which as an animator is essentially what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Because all animation is, is a series of drawings or images played back faster and faster, in repeated order, faster, 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 until at some point when you're watching it, your brain sort of merges everything together and you end up looking at something and it looks like there's a guy running across the screen, which is really cool. It we create movement out of just still images. But what we want as animators is not to create just movement. We want to create an experience. We want to create an emotional connection with each of you. So when you're watching our animation on screen, you're not thinking, oh look, there's something moving, but you're thinking, wow, Roxanne is really hurt by this situation, and Megamind feels really, really bad that he let her on, and he, he lied to her, and she's really hurt and wants to make up, and all this sort of stuff. We want you guys to feel these things, because to us, it's not about movement, it's about character, and that's how we try and tell good stories, is by thinking about the character. And we do this in a number of different ways, which I'm gonna tell you about right now. Um, so the first thing we do is we think about the character's arc, and that's basically how do they change over the course of the story that we're trying to tell. They start off sad, they end up happy. Great. In the, the case of the spider story, the spider sp starts off mean and evil with fangs and crazy eyes and ends up squished. <laughs> My favorite story. I love this story. In a film like Megamind, we can't really go with a simple character arc like this. We need to come up with something a little bit more nuanced because this won't hold your attention for 90 minutes. What we want to do is actually go and replicate what you guys have in, the, in your lives, which is a character arc where your life has a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of stuff that happens. And if we can do this with a character, then it becomes a lot more interesting and is going to hopefully connect with you on a deeper level. Now, it takes us about uh, three to five years to create an animated picture. That's basically three to five years from the start of story to when we finish the animation and you're able to see it in the screen. And when we're animating, we're actually focusing on one tiny portion of that film for about a week to 10 weeks, depending on the length of the shot. And in fact, an animator takes, on average, one week to create three and a half seconds of film. So this shot right here is the same shot repeating over and over and over. It's just over three seconds. That would take somebody one week, which is crazy, right? It's like an entire week focusing on this one moment. So what we do is we sit here and we're like, okay, in the arc of the character, this one moment is the most important moment in the entire universe, because I'm on it for a week, so it's got to be really, really important. But I need to think about the whole character and what's happening over the entire course of the film. But this moment is the most precious moment. But the whole film's really important, but I really care about this moment. It's going to be the best shot ever. So we're constantly bouncing back and forth between the moment that we're in and the story that we're trying to tell of the entire character. And the way that we stay sane while we're doing this is we have a rule, is we think moments are important. Every single moment in the film is important because it allows the characters to progress along their arc. So we have to keep thinking about that. Each moment I'm acting on, each moment I'm doing, is going to move the character further and eventually end up with a result that you, the audience, will really, really enjoy. So in the story of the spider, the moment where he gets squished, most important, most happy moment of my life, I would say. Um, so we, we think moments are important. We also realize that moments have to be very specific. Each choice that we make about the character needs to relate to who that character is. 
So if my mom had handed me a sheet of paper with a bunch of random drawings of spiders and said, nightmares are over, let me go to sleep, it wouldn't have really had much of an effect. It had to be this specific spider killed or squished in this specific way with that specific result for me to have been able to get rid of my nightmares. So each moment has to be very, very specific to the character. And we think about that by actually thinking about the character holistically. It's not just what's happening during the course of the film, which is this present part, but we also think about where did the character come from? What's their background? What was their relationship like with their parents? Did they have money stolen from them at lunch? Uh, did they go to Baskin Robbins to get ice cream? Whatever it is, we think about them holistically for their past and also for the future because we want to know where are they going? What's happening after the movie? Now, you might, nev you might not ever, ever see any of this stuff. You might look at it, you see the one movie, and that's it because maybe we don't make a sequel. I wish we would make a sequel. Please go see our movie so we can make sequels. But anyway, <laughs> you might not ever see any of it, but it's important to us as animators to know where these characters are coming from and where they're going. I'm going to show you a couple of animation tests that we did on Megamind. Um, we had two superhuman characters in Megamind, Titan and Metro Man. Both of them had the exact same powers, but they both used those powers and reacted to things in very different ways. Metro Man grew up with his powers, so we assumed that any time he was using them, he would know exactly what to do to be the most efficient and most effective and look the most beautiful for cameras because he knew the paparazzi were around. So we could treat him in that way. Everything was very, very efficient. Titan, on the other hand, had just received his powers. He thought the world was against him. Uh, so he f we figured with him, if he would pick up a car, he would be completely off balance. It would throw him all over the place. He would react to it in a way where he f normally feels bad when the world treats him bad, so he would react poorly. Um, we could have a lot of fun with these ideas. <laughs> and because he's the bad guy, he could even do things that Metro Man could never, ever do, but were a lot of fun to think about. So moments are important, moments are specific, and moments have to be motivated. And what I mean, mean by that is there's basically two ways something can move or something can happen in a film. Either they can be motivated externally or internally. External motivation is something like this. Here's the spider, spider gets squished. That's an external motivation for the spider to not be alive anymore. <laughs> it's okay, it's kind of interesting. But we could also have internal motivation where the spider's here, the spider notices a foot coming, the spider goes to catch it, a little bit squished, and then <laughs> gone. Same result, same start, same result, but the second one is a lot more interesting because now we know something about the spider. We can start to think, oh, maybe he's thinking about this thing, or maybe he doesn't like feed, or uh, most spiders probably don't, I don't know. Um, but we, learn, we, we start to know more about the spider, which is great. We also know a little bit more about the person doing the squishing, the, the squishing there, which maybe we don't like him as much as we used to. So the moments have to be specific, they have to be important, and they have to be motivated. So when we're animating, we choose our actions based on those things. They have to progress the character further along their arc. Very, very important. They have to be based on the character's history. Every single action we choose is unique to that character, and if we don't think that way, you're gonna pop out of the picture and you won't believe the character's making those choices. And they have to be motivated. Every single action has to appear like it's coming from inside the character and it's their own choice as opposed to just stuff happening to them. And the reason why all that works and why when we do that effectively, you're drawn into the films and you believe the characters is because that's what each of you do when you're making your own choices. And that's what you do when you're dealing with your life. So this is my challenge or suggestion to you is imagine that you are one of the characters in our films. What do you want to see if you're up on screen? What do you want your path to be? Do you want to be an animator? And if so, I've got cards. Come talk to me after the show. Do you want to be a car mechanic? Do you want to be a mom? Do you want to be a dad? Do you want to be the president? Whatever it is you want to be, think about your arc. And then think about what are the moments that are going to be the most important that will help you move along those arc, along that arc. Maybe the moment will continue you and you're already on that direction. Maybe you're going down like this and you want to turn something around. There's a number of, of important moments that you can pick that will be yours. And then go out and kill your spider. Thank you very much.